Shalom. First off, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rukakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the hopeful elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And to all my brothers out here preaching this truth to you, I say Shalom. This is Amatazar from the Chicago camp coming back at you again with another lesson entitled Patterns of Existence. The water to the elder Benji for putting me on to this documentary uh, that was created by Tim Mahoney and released in 2015. So this is a documentary that is basically touching on this big push uh, since the 1950s for scholars and Egyptologists and archaeologists, uh, all these so-called religious leaders as well, to discount the Exodus account as not being true history. Now, as a side note, okay, so this big push started in the 1950s. And as a side note, 1948, we know as the Belfort Declaration. All right. And this is when Israel was made a so-called Jewish state. All right. So it's mighty uh, interesting how um, when these small hats, all right, got into uh, that land, then you also have this push, all right, to discount um, the Exodus account as well as not being true history. All right, so basically um, you have a community of so-called scholars, all right, um, that have established a chronology or dating period, all right, that's universally accepted. All right. But it appears from this documentary by Tim Mahoney that they're off by two to four hundred years. All right. So even in the face of physical evidence, they won't even consider, you know, changing any of the times. All right. Because it would line up with the truth and it would also render their position and their arguments invalid. So the Lord put this spirit on this Mr. Tim Mahoney, who appears to be an Edomite. All right. Either way, um, <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. So, um, Psalms 64 and 8. I'm using my, I'm using the computer because I don't, I can't get away from this uh, Tubi. All right, because I'm actually on Tubi. All right, 64 and 8, it says, So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. All right, so in these last days, you got Esau basically telling on himself. <laughs> All right. So like I said, he appears to be an Edomite, but either way, whether he is or not, um, you know, the fact that he could be, and he's telling them, you know, he's, t he's basically expl ex explaining about what his people have done. All right, so this is uh, Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, thirteen and eight, and it reads: For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. All right, uh, none of us can. All right, no one can do uh, anything. Uh, to hurt or stop this truth, all right? Bottom line, you know, you can try, all right? But the truth will be revealed, all right? Now, let's see. So the Lord put the spirit on Mr. Mahoney, all right? Now we're going to watch, um, we're going we're gonna to watch a couple sections of this uh, piece. So let's take a look. Down from Sinai is the foundation of our civilization. Take away the Ten Commandments, and we are out of business. Yet against the idea that the biblical account is true, voices across our culture and around the world are raised in protest. These voices say that the biblical narrative is nothing more than a myth, a fairy tale. And their antagonistic claims appear to be supported by the findings of modern archaeology. Exodus did not happen in the way that it is described in the text on the background of the 13th century BC. I don't believe there was a single event that we can call the Exodus archaeologically or historically. In 
It's 24 minutes past the hour on the Michael Medved Show, your daily dose of debate. And right now, debating some of the most important questions with Rabbi David Wolpe. Okay, so now you have this so-called Rabbi David Wolpe, all right? It's very interesting. I want you to pay attention to him because you're going to hear him speak very, very proudly. You're also going to hear him speak with a forked tongue using that double speak shit that I was talking about before. So you're using double speak and double talk. All right. It's hard to watch this dude. Right. And just the idea all right, that he actually thinks that he's a person. OK. Part of the people of the Lord. who leads one of America's largest Jewish congregations. In 2001, Rabbi Wolpe created a national furor when his Passover sermon challenged the historical reality of the Exodus. Rabbi Wolpe, what did you say? I said that the Exodus certainly didn't happen the way the Bible depicted it, assuming that it was a historical event in any description. I think that if you look at it scientifically, it's virtually indefensible to make the Bible's case. But you also have to understand that your faith isn't based on splitting seas or archaeological digs. It's based on something much deeper. But if these are not facts, if this is a fairy story, if this is fabricated somehow, doesn't that undermine the religious meaning? In other words, doesn't that change the extent to which it has a historical core is very hard to say, but my deeper conviction about it is that it's a story that whether it is whether it was true it is true and those are two different things that seems to be well in other words things that aren't facts can be truths what part of the torah would you grant to be based upon historical reality i don't i can't tell you i don't know I don't know, and and although it may it may irk people, I don't care. If the leading scholars agree with the most outspoken atheists and agnostics, if even some rabbis agree with the most skeptical archaeologists that there's no evidence at all that the Exodus ever really happened, then what are the rest of us supposed to think? Okay. So just listening to him, you could just hear how prideful he is and how proud proud he is, okay? But they've been put in a position to lie. They've been in a position to be proud, right? All right, these same people, you know, they're the ones that's uh, ruling the earth right now. This is Job 9 and 24. You've heard it before. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? All right. So a little bit on his pride. All right. So this is Psalms 10 and 4. And it reads, The wicked through the pride of his continence will not seek after the Most High. It says the Most High is not in all his thoughts. Okay. Habakkuk 2 and 5. And it reads, Yea, also, because he transgresseth by wine, which is all his uh, philosophies, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied. But gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth upon heapeth unto him all people. Okay? This is just a little bit of the personality and the characteristics of Esau Edom. Alright, we have uh, in the United States has uh, military installations in uh, most parts of this world. Alright? And how many of those nations have military installations in America? Okay? He want to control everybody and everything. The Bible also says he seeks to change times, laws, and seasons. All right, this same man, he gonna, he's, he's in a position that he could change the time of these dating periods. Okay? I mean, he's already changed uh, seasons and laws. He got January as the start of the new year. <laughs> All right? 
instead of the spring. Let's look at some more. Now, when this has commercials, I can't bypass the commercials because this is actually the website and this is actually actually a movie. Okay, so I can't bypass the commercials. Just so you know. Every year, Jewish families from around the world celebrate the deliverance of Israel from Egypt during the Passover feast. Records confirm that the Passover has been observed for thousands of years. Many believe it is difficult to explain the origin of Passover if there were no real event on which it was based. Mahoney went to speak with Rabbi David Hartman, the founder of the Shalom Hartman Institute. Each year, we celebrate the Exodus as if we were there. We were slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt, and we dramatically celebrate the Passover Seder as if we are participants. So there's always a renewal, always a renewal, giving a new spirit into the Passover Exodus story. Because in remembering the Exodus, we remember that in the dark conditions of history, God, the Lord, had in some way made possible through Moses our liberation. But what about those who think the Exodus never happened? Noted Israeli archaeologist Israel Finkelstein specializes in the ancient history of the land of Israel. In his influential book, The Bible Unearthed, he has argued that the Exodus did not happen in the manner described in the Bible. He proposes that it was based on vague memories of events written down for political motives centuries later. Do you believe in celebrating the Passover? Sure, celebrating the Passover, definitely. I think that uh, I make a distinction uh, in my private life, in my life as a scholar, in my life as a, you know, part of a family. I make a very clear distinction between scholarship and tradition. When I sit to the Passover meal and we read the Haggadah with the family, that evening it's all history from A to Z. Who says Perfect history? history? Because history is not only about, you know, the time of Moses, let's say, okay? History is also about all those many generations of my forefathers who were sitting to the same table, you know, in Passover at the same uh, time and reciting the Haggadah. This is also history. And so, which means that I am part of something bigger, you know, which goes on and on for many generations. And this is important for me. So, um, yes, the answer is that there is a clear distinction between the two. What do you say to people who are concerned with the idea that these stories didn't happen as they were written? I will, I would tell them that this is not important. Whether the stories, whether things happened exactly in that way is not important. I think that it is more important to understand the meaning of Exodus, the moral of Exodus. Rabbi Wolpe has said that Professor Finkelstein's work has greatly influenced his thinking. The idea of the Exodus and the Revelation, however you configure it, is it is central to the Jewish tradition, but I think that doesn't mean that you have to believe that the Torah gives a historical account of it. I don't think the Torah is a book of facts. It's a book of meaning. What? <laughs> Boy, I tell you. So this is Psalms 50 and 19, and it reads... Thou giveth thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frame it deceit. Okay, so everything um, this devil says is always all right, gonna be a lie. Uh, the other week I had to uh, take my car in for a, uh, a wheel alignment, and I heard something thumping. So he gives me a call back and tells me um, he's got an estimate for 900 bucks, right? 
Since I, I need new struts and uh, new stabilizer bars, right? But um, he doesn't know. He's judging from the age of the car. He doesn't know I put those struts in myself less than five years ago. There's nothing wrong with the struts. The stabilizer bar was defective, but that was only 15 bucks. Okay? So it is true. Their tongue, frame it, deceit. All right? In all things. All right, let's... Uh, Go a little forward to this. Uh, let me see. No, you know what I want to do? Let me get Revelations 2 and 9 and 3 and 9. Because you just saw a visual imagery of these people. Okay. So-called celebrating uh, Passover. And you had the older pale gentleman say that uh, each year, you know, he said they were slaves in uh, in Egypt. All right, so let's go uh, Revelations 2 and 9. And it says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Okay, so this is the book of Revelation. All right, this is the end time revealing of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right, only until the end is the truth going to come out. All right, and only until our Savior comes, all right, are we going to be recognized for who we truly are. Okay, so that means that there is some hypocrisy going on. There are some imposters, some imposters, all right, in the land. All right, this is telling you, Revelations 2 and 9. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy, which is a horrible lie, of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Okay? Roman, I mean, Revelations 3 and 9. And it reads, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet and know that I have loved thee. Okay. Now, that's that's a beautiful promise. Okay. It's, it's only until you have until you have a shot come back. All right. That he's going to expose the lie and those who say they are Jews and are not. All right, let's get to this last little section. Again, if there if a commercial pops up, I can't do nothing with it. We just got to sit through it. All right. Okay. So here we go sites were not even occupied throughout the entire late bronze age no high walls no massive destructions only a series of burnt out and so now he's going to talk about this has been so now he's going to talk about um the lineup okay when you place history right when you place this archaeological archaeological uh, chrono chronology <laughs> when you place the chronology in the right time period right all the bible and everything lines up that's what this uh, documentary is all about and that's what Tim Mahoney is trying to prove so he's telling them hey you guys your dates are you know too far back in the past you need to bring your dates forward two to four hundred years they ain't trying to hit it, okay? All right, because uh, it if 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 they move the dates, okay, you got to watch the documentary. If they move the dates up two to four hundred years, guess what? There's there's a whole lot more archaeological information. They all tie in together, and the reason why it's all out of whack is because the dating that is established. The key factor in the current skepticism over the biblical account of the conquest. Again, 
maybe they've been looking in the wrong time for evidence of the Israelites entering Canaan. Because when you look earlier in the Middle Bronze Age, all these cities were occupied and they were guarded by high walls. And amazingly, they all suffered major destructions in the same short period, just as described in the Bible. When you put those cities side by side, the biblical account and the archaeology match extremely well. I think we have enough destroyed and abandoned cities to, to say this fits the sequence of events the Bible is describing. There's a high probability that we're looking here at Joshua's conquest. The whole thing from the beginning of the sojourn in, in, in Egypt, the slavery, Moses and the Exodus, the conquest of the promised land is all there in one nice neat line, but it's way too early. My parents can always check my glucose levels just by looking at their cell yeah. phones. I share my numbers with my wife and my daughter. And if I'm out in the yard working or busy, can't get rid of these damn commercials. Esau always trying to sell you something. Buy this, eat this. With no fees or minimums here. and no overdraft fees, banking with Capital One is the easiest no decision in the history the kingdom, of decisions. Though. Even easier than this. I'll take Barkley. Yes, I still got it. I told you she'd pick me first. <laughs> yep, even easier than that. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, is it even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? I'm still here, don't worry. Lots of oranges. This is our last Half little sugar. section. 1000% delicious. That's and simple then I'm math. Get ready for the close Say yes out. To simple. Roald Dempson and others suggest that this problem didn't start with the Bible. It began with Egypt. They proposed that early scholars developed its dating incorrectly, and that new information requires that the events of Egypt's history be shifted forward on the timeline by centuries. And all of a sudden, these things that are too early become contemporary with the events in the Old Testament. They sync up again. Everything links together. I was so excited to hear of this possibility. It would explain why all the evidence has been consistently earlier. But could the history scholars created for Egypt really be off by centuries? I'm very much against chronological <laughs> revisionism. Very good, very competent historians have been working for, for decades and decades on Egyptian chronology and Near Eastern chronology. There's still more work to be done. But I don't see uh, a possibility of moving things centuries. I'm not into this business at all, and I think that we know enough to say that we may be wrong 10 years here and 10 years there, but there's no way, you know, to change, to, to shift centuries. I mean, forget it. I think that we are on solid ground, so there's no need to look for, you know, different centuries. All right. That, that's going to be enough. That's going to do it. Okay, so um, it's a good documentary. Uh, go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, and again, you got Revelations 2 and 9 and Revelation 3 and 9. And here we are approaching World War 3. All right. So we're almost at the end of time. All right. And you got people, you know, still saying that, you know, they're someone who they're not. Um, but let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and look at. We'll do it together. Let's go look at Isaiah 34 and 1. And it reads, Come near, ye nations, to hear and hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of Yahweh is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. And he hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. 
their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their body, out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down, as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea. Okay, Idumea is the Greek uh, version of the word Edomites. Okay, or Edom. And upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of Yahweh is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness. And with the blood of lambs and goats and with the fat of kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. For the unicorns shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of Yahweh's vengeance, and the year of the recompenses for the controversy of Zion. And the controversy of Zion is the displacement, all right, and the acquisition of the land of Israel, this land, all right, um, and what has been done to to the people, okay? So it's a, it's a people before it's a place, all right? Now, Deuteronomy 33 and 28. Israel... Israel then shall dwell in safely alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also his heavens shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by Yahweh, the ship, the, sh the shield, Salakia, of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency. And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. All right. Ezekiel 28. All right, where is Ezekiel? 28. 25. Thus said Yahweh Power, when I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered, and shall be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen. Then shall they dwell in their land that I have given to my servant Jacob, and they shall dwell safely therein, and shall build houses and plant vineyards. Yea, they shall dwell with confidence when I have executed judgments upon all those that despise them, round about them, and they shall know that I am Yahweh their power. Okay? And lastly, Second Ezra 6 and 27 and it reads for evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched as far as faith it shall flourish corruption shall be overcome and the truth which have been so long without fruit shall be declared okay and with that i'm gonna say shalom